everybody. Uh, today I'd like to give uh, an analogy between linear programming and linear algebra. Most people learn linear algebra over the reals first, although you can consider vector spaces over any field. Linear programming is like linear algebra, except you're not over the reals, you're over the non-negative reals. So this non-negative symbol means that uh, you know, we're only looking at non-negative real numbers. Let me try to make this analogy a little bit more precise. So in linear algebra, your basic problem of interest is linear equations. A is a matrix, X and B are vectors, and you're trying to study the set of solutions to AX equals B. And one of the main things we learn in linear algebra is that you could either have one solution, a unique solution, you could have many solutions, and in many solutions, like an infinite family, it could be a line's worth of solutions or a plane's worth of solutions, etc. Or you could have no solutions. You, you determine which option you have by doing Gaussian elimination. And you figure out what the solution set is. The solution set is going to be an affine, affine subspace. Um, so it might be the empty set, or it might be a line, um, or it might be a plane. Etc. You know, a linear subspace has to go through the origin. So a, a linear subspace would go through the origin. But an affine subspace, affine just means that it doesn't need to go through the origin. So it, it could be translated to not go through the origin. Okay. For linear programming, the basic problem is to solve an inequality. So AX is at most a vector B. And this comparison between vectors is entry wise. So the first entry of AX has to be at most the first entry of vector B, and same for the second entries and third entries. The standard algorithm is the simplex method, which we'll learn in detail in this class. Um, the solution set is a convex polyhedron, as, as we'll talk about. Um, more today. Okay, so let me make this analogy more precise by a very cool um, uh, discussion. I mean, a key difference is in linear programming, you're actually often trying to not just find a solution, but to optimize a solution, find the best solution, okay? Linear algebra, you're just trying to characterize the set of all solutions. No, no solution is, is better than another, right? I guess the notation going on here is that in linear programming, you might, um, you might try to maximize, you might be trying to maximize something subject to those constraints. Okay. In some sense, you could think of linear programming as not having an optimization function. And here's how you do it, okay? So in some sense, finding an optimal solution is no harder than finding any solution in linear programming. And that makes this analogy more, more direct because in linear algebra, no solution is better than another. So let me explain this by an example. So pretend we're trying to maximize x1 plus x2. So we're trying to move as far as we can to the northeast, but our variables x1 and x2 have to satisfy these following constraints. They're not negative, and we have three more constraints, given these three um, half spaces, which carve out our feasible region. Okay. In this feasible region, the optimal solution is here. But I want to explain how you can, you can really find this optimal solution and this optimal value if your only tool was, can I find any solution, not finding an optimal solution. Okay, so pretend we have this black box that can give us a solution. And we ask our black box, hey, give us a solution. And we find the solution here, okay? You know, the, the optimal cost in this problem is going to be
um, not the optimal cost, the optimal solution has value x1 plus x2 equals, so in this example, it's going to be 3 plus 2, which is 5. Okay. We found a solution whose value is maybe um, value is 0 0.5. Okay. Not a very good value. Okay. We asked our oracle to give us any solution. Okay. It gave us a solution that doesn't have a very good value. How do we find a better solution? You can iterate this process. So we're going to add another constraint. So our new constraint is now going to be x1 plus x2 is at least 0 0.5. If you, want, if you want all your inequalities to be bounded from above, you could multiply everything by negative 1 in this new constraint. OK, so let me just do that in parentheses. You could write this as negative x1 minus x2. Flip the sign of the inequality is at most negative 0 0.5. And I'm just saying that because sometimes, you know, when we write AX is at most B, we want all these inequalities to be less than or equal ones. Okay. So I've added this new constraint. I want my, um, my solution to be at least 0 0.5. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me show you how you iterate this. Actually, I'm going to change that, that I'm going to change this value 0 0.5 here for the following reason. If I ask my black box oracle to give me another feasible solution, so my, my feasible set has now changed. My feasible set is now just this set, right? I'm no longer interested in, in solutions that are worse. Okay. But if I ask my oracle, to give me another solution. Actually, it might just give me the same exact solution. Whoops, I haven't gotten any better. Okay, so I know I can achieve 0 0.5. Let's try uh, something more ambitious. Let's see if we can achieve the optimal value of um, 7. You know, can I, not the optimal value, but can I, can I ob 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 obtain the value of 7? When I, when I add this, right, I get this constraint x1 plus x2 is at most 7. And now my feasible solution set is empty. Because I can never be to the right of this new constraint, right, and still be my feasible solution. So I have no solutions, OK? So 7 was a little ambitious, right? So 0 0.5 I could achieve, 7 was too ambitious, and now I can just do a binary search. So why don't we try 2, okay? So can I add in a new constraint where I want my objective function to achieve at least the value 2? I ping my oracle, hey, here's my new feasible region. You know, can I find a solution in this feasible region? Yeah, I'm assuming that I can always find any feasible solution. Okay, I get some feasible solution. Wonderful. And maybe this feasible solution has the value of, of I don't know, three. Okay, so then I keep doing this binary search. And, you know, I just refine and refine and refine my feasible uh, region. My feasible region is getting smaller and smaller until I'm, I'm converging on the optimal solution. You know, maybe I never quite get there exactly, but I get as close as I want. So the moral is that uh, via binary search, you can get arbitrarily close to an optimal solution 
if you can solve linear programs in the sense of finding whether a feasible solution exists or not. So that just makes the analogy between linear algebra and linear programming a little bit more uh, direct. Linear programming, you're just trying to find solutions. Or sorry, linear algebra, you're just trying to find solutions. Linear programming, you want optimal solutions given your, given your optimization function. But if you can just find solutions, do a, this binary search, and boom, now you have an algorithm for finding optimal solutions where you can get as close to optimal as you want. Questions? So Henry, does this really get you as close as you want? It seems like doing this binary search, it gets us on the line of the solution, correct? But is it actually, or I guess you just have to take an intersection with the convex, with the parameters that are, um, with our other constraints to find where it would actually be, right? That's right. So, so we're, um, we're using this, algorithm for finding feasible solutions on problems that keep getting updated. Mm -hmm. And the way we keep updating our, our problem is it's, it's this entire problem, right? But we just, we just keep changing this value to be okay. larger than the, the, um, you know, the best solution we found so far. So in blue right now, in blue right now might be my feasible region. You know, I found a solution here Right, and um, if, if this is the constraint that I've added, then in blue is my feasible region. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and now I ask, okay, I know I can do that well, can I do this well? And then my feasible region gets smaller. So okay. your feasible region is only getting smaller and smaller and you're sort of like cutting it to try to find better and better values of your mm -hmm. optimal solution. So, I mean, there's more I could say here. Um, just let me introduce some vocabulary. Um, phase one versus phase two. Okay. So in the simplex algorithm, the simplex algorithm proceeds differently, okay? In the simplex algorithm, what you do is you find, you find any basic feasible solution, any vertex, and then you try to find better and better vertices until you find an optimal vertex, okay? Phase two of the simplex algorithm is what you learn first, and phase two is how you go from one vertex solution to a better one, okay? After you learn phase two, then you learn phase one, and phase one is just finding any vertex of your of your polygon okay but in some sense you know phase one is 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 the harder more general goal you know in some sense if you can solve phase one if you can find any solution then you can then you can find an optimal solution as i outlined here just adding constraint saying okay i found a pretty good solution but now i'm adding a, a constraint saying i want an even better one Good question, Jack. Other questions? All right, well, thanks.